Hello, hello, and welcome to the next episode of Bizarre Bradley. Do 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 do. <laughs> I really hope I can figure out how to put something in there. If not, then good luck. You can enjoy the awkwardness. Hopefully, some people do. Hopefully, some people don't. Uh, the fan on the monitor is going crazy right now, so I'm really hoping that doesn't pick up. And I'm already having issues of, like, I can hear popping on the headphones, but when I play back the recording, it doesn't pop. So I'm really hoping that's not in here. I am not a professional podcaster. I'll probably have Ethan check this out. If not, hi, Ethan. Sorry I didn't ask you. I was too excited to get the episode out. <laughs> but hi, my name is Denise. I am a junior. Wow, I'm a junior now. Um, I'm a junior English education major, if you do not know me, because... I don't think that first episode got a lot of views because it was the last of the last. It was the end of the semester. And yeah, it was during a really hectic time. So I'm hoping to do better this semester and do things you guys are more interested in. But if you're just now hearing it for the first time, the last episode I did was on the Bradley fire and the history of Lydia Moss Bradley. But we are not talking about that today. Instead, today we will be talking about Constance Hall. All right, so what is Constance Hall? Well, as you know it today, Constance Hall is the music building. It holds Bradley School of Music. It has lots of practice rooms. It's really pretty if you go inside. It holds one of the only two fireplaces on campus, which, lucky them, I love fireplaces. I don't know about you. But it didn't start out as the School of Music. In fact, it used to be a woman's dormitory. It was built in 1931 as a woman's dormitory. And fun fact, it is supposedly haunted. It is said to be haunted by former Dean Olive White, who passed away due to an, Ill an illness that she'd been struggling with at the age of 84 years old. I decided to go ahead and ask a few music majors that I know if they think that Constance Hall is haunted. And here's what I got. So first I heard from Bradley student Xavier Chapman. And he said, yes, because it's definitely way too old and has a lot of history to not have something haunting in it, whether it be haunted by a person or intense feelings. And then to build on that, Mackenzie Skye responded saying she definitely thinks it's haunted as well because she said that lights randomly turn off late at night in there and there's different sections of the building where doors will just randomly open and close as well as a lot of other creepy stuff happening in the building. Little side note, I agree with them. Like I haven't spent a lot of time in there just because I'm not music affiliated really in the slightest here at Bradley like I like choir and stuff but I'm just way too busy for it but I did get really weird vibes when I went in there and as I was in there and just looking at it once I was like what is Constance Hall and I got really curious so I decided to look into it and to most people it's nothing other than like a kind of weird cottage looking building which like don't get me wrong it's really pretty but it does not match the dorms that are around it like come on it stands out compared to like all the prison looking buildings around it so i looked into it and i learned a disturbing and kind of sad history that led to constance hall so that's what i'm mainly going to tell you about today is the namesake of constance hall jenny meta constance so who was Jenny Meta Constance? Well, in the early 1900s, she was head of the Bradley University English Department. And she was loved by the entire community, not just Bradley, but also Peoria. She wrote the book Learners and, not Learners and, just Learners Teachers, which I will have a link to a little sneak peek of what I found. Or actually, no, I don't think I could give a link because... Technically, the set I used isn't good, but we don't talk about that. Um, but I found a link, and I read some of it. I'll be honest, I struggled to read it because it's from the early 1900s, and I was very confused. But it was actually published a couple months before she passed away. 
and it was published in the National Council of Teachers of English, or not published in, published by them, which I know a lot of you may not know them, but they're a really big name within English teachers. <laughs> like, I'm currently always talking about them in my classes here just because they are really big and they have conferences every year. There's a lot of stuff going on. They're super helpful in preparing teachers and helping old teachers, new teachers in English. So that's really big. And the fact that she was published by them, I think is really awesome. But sadly, as I said, it was published only months before her passing because she passed away August 28th, 1928. And she actually passed while she was studying for her advanced degree in English literature at Northwestern University in 1928. All right, so I know I keep saying she passed away. However, I was just doing that because I didn't want to spoil what was coming now. So instead of saying passed away from now on, I will admit Miss Constance was murdered, sadly. And that is what we're going to be talking about today. So Place yourself in the night of August 28, 1928. Jenny Meta Constance was hanging out with friends all day. She was with three of them, I believe it was. Yeah, I'm looking at my notes. She was with three friends. And she was leaving the library at Northwestern University to go home. It was 9.30 p.m. She just spent the entire day with her friends. They were working on stuff, just hanging out. And she was just walking home because she was tired. I know I sound kind of redundant right now, but you'll learn that's just my vibe. I'm not going to re-record that. I'm sorry. But she was walking home. She left at 9.30. That's the last time anyone saw her because she never made it home. So the next morning, which was August 29th, she was found by a milkman. And she was found in the hedges that surround George Peak. I'm going to try and find a photo, see if there's anything that I find that looks like that. And if so, I'll put it in this segment so you guys can see, kind of visualize what that looks like. But the detective case was rough. They found her body, but it took a while for them to find who actually killed her. But at the scene, when after everyone showed up, after the milkman, because you know, milkman was first which first off okay side note imagine being that milkman like you're just carrying your little thingamajig full of glass bottles of milk and then you see a dead woman in a bush like i would be traumatized like i'm just doing my job i don't want to see a dead person like i don't think any um i was gonna say i don't think anyone wants to see a dead person i don't think any sane person wants to see a dead person so that is very scary especially since he's just a milkman so that poor dude i can't imagine the thoughts through his head as he just walked up on a body doing his route but anyways detectives were the next to show up and at the scene they discovered that the clothing had been ripped from her body and they found a brutal wound to her head which apparently was the cause of death and they found a large steel pipe that was wrapped in a white blood-stained rag around one end close by. So police followed the trail of ripped up clothing that was left and found her library card, her jewelry, and an empty purse. So this is where the search begins because as stated before, Miss Constance was loved by the entire community, so everyone wanted to know what happened. However, the Evanston police did not really do a good job at first trying to do the search. In the beginning, the Evanston police were trying to frame Bradley faculty members because apparently there was an argument between Miss Constance and a couple others. However, this angered the Bradley and Peoria community, obviously, because these accusations, they just couldn't see it being another Bradley faculty member because no, they couldn't see anyone doing that. So they ended up taking matters into their own hands, as you see a lot. Like, that happens a lot in cases like these, especially back in 
early 1900s, late 1800s. So the people of Peoria and just broadly in general took it into their own hands and through this they found the watch that had been taken from Miss Constance and they traced it back to a Mr. Lee Bart Bastian. Bastian? Bastian? I don't know. I'm sorry if I pronounced that and that happens to be your name. But they traced it back to a Mr. Lee Bart Bastian who claimed he had bought it from a man named David Shanks for a dollar seventeen. I did the calculations because I am a very curious person and I know some of you listening are probably just as curious. That means he bought the watch for around $22 in today's money. So not super fancy, but not super cheap, you know? But then the police took this lead and they found David Shanks. So David Shanks was arrested and they also arrested a man who what had washed the blood-stained clothes and never reported the police. I didn't see the name of this man or the date, but apparently they found out that David Shanks went and was just trying to get his clothes cleaned out of laundromat or something, and the dude who was washing them was just like, ah, normal. Like, he didn't see anything weird about that. So he was arrested, too, as kind of like, not an accomplice, but failure to inform police of a serious matter. After being arrested, David Shanks actually admitted to the murder, and he was claiming that he was just sitting and waiting for a victim to rob, and that sadly ended up being Miss Constance. So, David Shanks was a 24-year-old man, and he was sentenced to execution via electric chair on November 20th, 1928. Sadly, I do not have a whole lot more about it. I spent a good portion of the summer researching this like I had already started researching it before um, summer actually started and it's really hard to find a lot of information especially because there's actually a surprising amount of people with the name Constance so it made it really difficult and I think I found all the public information I could find I even found a news article from the time talking about when David Shanks was persecuted and I literally just tried to record myself reading it like three times. Don't know why. I kept struggling. So I just, I give up. I will give a link in the description of the video about what, like you can go read it yourself. I especially was struggling because there's a certain word I wanted to switch, but I didn't replace it properly because they used the N word, which isn't good. So I was just trying to say black, but like it didn't grammatically make sense and it just was bothering me that it wasn't grammatically correct because I was trying to say like a black man, but I was stumbling because that wasn't what was in front of me. So you could just read the article yourself. It's not much different than what I've shared here, but you can see the entire newspaper of what it was included in if that's something that interests you. Like I said, I will leave a link in the description as well as everything else I have quoted from. Just because, you know, I don't like to plagiarize. So you can look at everything and see if there's any little info I missed. I don't think I did, but I'm a person, so I make mistakes. So you're definitely welcome to look at everything I used. But that is the story of Miss Jenny Meta Constance, the namesake of Bradley's Constance Hall. And to close up, I just want to add this little quote that I put down. I don't think I got it from anybody. I think it's my own quote, but I put it in italics, so I'm going to read it as I wrote it. I just want to leave you with, Peoria and Bradley University mourned Miss Jessie Meta Constance as she was considered not, not only an amazing educator, but an outstanding person in general. Due to her reputation and the circumstances, she was memorialized with the Women's Dormitory, which still stands today with her name, despite having different purposes now. So I'm sad that she didn't get to live a full life. She was only 40 years old. She was just getting to the nice, juicy parts of living. It's not a good way to describe it, but I, that's where my brain's going right now. So she didn't get to the nice, good part of life where she can just do whatever. Like, she was really in the middle of furthering her education. She was head of the English department she had so much going for her and it was just all taken away because a man wanted to take some money he wanted to make some money 
So, with that, I will say goodbye. I already have my next episode planned. I need to record it. I'm thinking about interviewing a special guest. I you'll you'll know if I get it set up. If not, then I'll let you know. But hopefully I'll have the next episode out in the next week or so. But with that, I hope this semester is awesome. I hope classes are not too easy, but you're able to relax on the side. You're not stressed out and you're not feeling like you're going to die. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And yeah, I will see you next time. Bye.